Oh, hey friends, we're back for day four of the delightful advent calendar lore. Um, I am Melly. Why did I hesitate on saying my own name there? Did you catch that? I am Melly, Melissa from Melly Knits. And along with my husband, Aaron, we run our side hustle gone wild where we hand process wool. So like from the farm to the tub, to the spinner, and that's what we do. So uh, going through day after day, opening up the advent calendar we created this year, it's 12 days, it's called Delightful, and it's just a little bit of a spin journey. And this video, these videos were designed to be a companion to the advent for those who want to see this as a value added sort of experience. Mm. But I think it's been kind of fun to do. So uh, just to go along as a companion with that advent for anyone who wants to know more about the wool and the spinning. For those of you who are joining who do not have an advent, welcome, welcome. Hopefully there's something in here that's um, fun for you to experience, even though you're not handling or touching the wool. I know yesterday there was quite a lot of comments about the Merino day, talking about that. And uh, that was, it was fun. I also, <sighs> okay, people in the comments came in clutch. So I am learning the YouTubes and this whole land and like, being very minimal about it. So far, all we do for setup is there's like this little arm, you guys can't see it in front of me here, and it's like a little claw, and it's holding the phone. There's my, just my regular old iPhone is what's filming me right now. And then I push the cuddle couch out of the way. That's it, otherwise, where I'm sitting, because I don't have, I'm a, uh, we're in a townhouse, and our windows either face south or they face north, uh, so the, there's never really a great light that comes in the house. That and the fact that I live in the Pacific Northwest and so like we're literally, we've entered the gloomy time and we'll be in the gloomy time until like March. We'll get a couple of sunny days here and there and then all the Canadians will come out of their homes and be like, what? What is this that I see? What is this orb in the sky? And we'll think it's alien invasion and then we'll remember what the sun looked like is essentially what happens. Luckily for me, I'm down for gray and gloom because I'm like an inside knitter spinner type. So this climate works very, very well for my brain, but that was a rabbit trail. Oh, oh, I'm grabbing that one. And speaking of rabbit trails, let's open day four. Wow. That worked so perfectly. Okay. Dang, I love when that lines up. Here's the advent. Oh, 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 the people in the comments came in clutch. They told me that the reason why I'm unable to get my stuff to focus is because my phone has like face recognition and it's designed to hone in on my face. So I have to use my hand, the hand that I can never get to work in these videos to cover my face. And then it's going to hone in on the thing I'm showing it. We're testing that today. Groundbreaking moment on Melly Knits YouTube. You're here for it. Okay, ready? We're opening up day four. It is a gold foil. Hold on, first. Oh, I think I'm supposed to like that. <laughs> okay. As long as my face is covered. We're going in on day four. We're in gold foil, which means that we're going to meet another one of our exotics. There's six in this advent calendar, so we're meeting exotic number two. And a little card from cute little daughter, nurse daughter, who stamped all these cards for me. Well, is this face thing working already? Is that all I had to do is get my mug out of the way and then we can see stuff? Um, dang it, I wrecked my beautiful segue that I didn't even intentionally mean to do. The rabbit trail. But now I've entered an, another rabbit. We're, stop, leave that one alone. Leave it alone, Melissa. Okay. Day four. This is what we have for day four. I want you to know that the um, impromptu background music is of no extra charge. I'm just gonna cover my face. Like I should just like actually just go like this, the whole video, and then we'll never ever have issues. But this would be sort of a strange position to talk in, okay. This day, day four, is called the Rabbit of Carabanig. And if you do not know that reference, um, I'm not telling you. You can go journey Google if you want to, C-A-E-R-B-A-N-N-O-G. You go see what you find. I just want you to know, it makes me giggle every single time, the Rabbit of Carabanig. Uh, day three's wool. So this is the merino from yesterday, okay? That beautiful silvery stites off. Oh, I should show you that. My, oh, oh, another moment. 
There it is. There's day threes. I should have like an order written out in front of me so I can uh, do these things in a similar way, like have a pattern because, you know, I really don't have a pattern here. And normally I would start with the show and tell and not just jump into day four. And I kind of like having patterns. Actually, I really like having patterns. So you would think this is something that I had already worked out. Apparently not. And I also didn't tie this up with the lock like I really like to do. So I'm doing that again. Everybody erase your brains, okay? You didn't just see that yarn. Day one, day two. Is my face sufficiently covered? I think it is. Day three. Are we in frame? We are. There's what we've got happening so far in the delightful advent. And now, rabbit trail. <laughs> Theme of the day. It's like this bunny has cursed me already. We are on to the rabbit of caravan egg. Day four, so day three's wool. This is uh, the merino from yesterday, and it has 20% Angora Rabbit from Bubbles, Buttercup, and Blossom. Those three uh, bunnies, they live about 20 minutes that way. They're on a farm called Kensington Prairie Farms, where I get a lot of my alpaca. There's two places I get a lot of my alpaca. Sunkea, because they're awesome, and they're in the interior, like the Okanagan. Uh, and then I get it from these guys, Kensington Prairie, because they're like not that far away. I can go there. I can see all the animals. It's a riot. They have bunnies there and they share them with their cute, cute little like beard trimmers or whatnot. And then I go buy their little pelts and I huck them in the sink and boom, we have Angora. What I find, because I have worked with like commercial Angora top, um, which, you know, there is American Angora. I know that's something that some companies have moved towards using, but like 95% of Angora comes from China. Um, there have been some bad Angora, some bad Angora press in the last few years, just showing like the mistreatment of the bunnies. Um, I know like, mm, we won't get into the sketchy detail about that, but there has been some like not so nice imaging and things you don't feel great about, like if you were to be purchasing. Um, so just know this Angora is from a farm 20 minutes away. I have held these bunnies. They are adorable. They're happy. They're living their best lives in these beautiful big cages on a beautiful big farm. Um, anyway, but the difference between, so I talked briefly in my welcome video about how there's a difference between commercial tops of these exotics and then the hand process. So this is one of the hand processed ones. And I think the biggest difference was, um, anyone who's holding it and I'm not gonna be able to show this on the video, but there's like a mixture of the fur. So it's not all uniform. The uh, top I've worked with is very, very uniform. And you know, no matter what and when I buy it, it always comes the same. Like I can very much expect what I'm gonna be working with. Whereas these were three unique pelts. What do we call this? Shh. Fleece? We call it their fleece? Their fur? They're hot, no, they're high because their skin's still intact on their bodies. Uh, what, what do we call a bunnies? Okay, they're little furs, they're little fur coats. What on earth do we call this? Anyway, whatever, let's, let's just call it their fleece, okay? Maybe that is the word. The Angora fleece were all very unique. So like Bubbles, Buttercup and Blossom were each different tones of gray. Some were darker, one grew a bit of a shorter fleece. Fleece, that can't be right, fur? One grew a shorter fur pelt. Fur pelt seems deathy. I don't think pelt is the right word. I feel like that's what we call like the dead little dead skins. Um, okay, we're gonna get back. So whatever it's called, someone can leave that in the comments or I'll Google it right after. They were very unique and they were very different and they had different lengths of fiber. And it kind of created not so much like a texture, but I don't know what it was. It was a cool quality. Working with the Angora though, oh, my lanta and my stars. What a bomb, what an absolute bunny bomb that we set off into our house. So Angora fiber, for anyone who doesn't know, um, from the bunnies, don't confuse it with an Angora goat that makes mohair, but Angora fiber from the bunnies is hollow fiber. So similar to how like alpaca is hollow and camel is hollow and um, they are very insulating. They're warmer than wool. There's like variances out there on how much warmer than wool they are. 
like I don't know, six times warmer or whatever because the hollow fibers insulate. It's like we put them on and then our body heat gets trapped in that hollow fiber and it sort of retains it. It's really cool. So that's how come like alpaca fibers and all these other hollow ones. They also don't have any um, of the little barbs that are on the outside of wool. Like wool's kind of, if you look at like an individual strand of wool, like a little bit, you'll see they're like, they look, um, they look, they look like terrible uh, heel skin on people who don't take care of their feet. That's what I think they look like. It's a disgusting reference, but it's what it looks like. <laughs> They're all like, like they just look like you want to smooth it out. But that is what makes wool grippy. And, and when you're spinning it, you've got this like, <sighs> everybody wants to be touching everybody else. And then when, what? No one's there. No one's there. Go back and lay down. You're interrupting the YouTubes and you're guarding me very well. Thank you. Appreciate you. Okay. So with these fibers though, and the same goes with alpaca, they don't have those same barbs. So they're very, very slippy and they don't necessarily want to like join up with everybody. I almost feel like alpaca and angora and these slippy hollow fibers are like very individualistic. They're like, yes, I am the same as everybody else around me, but I'm going to be different whether you want me to be or not. So the second we start feeding this through the carter, Oh my gosh, it's like a buddy, it seriously felt like a buddy bomb went off in the room. We had, it was like thick in the air. There was like Angora just throughout the air. We had the Carter as slow as it can possibly go. And we were just feeding it through super slow, super good, like taking our time. And so Aaron, how we process things is we have the big homie, like the huge Carter and Aaron runs that one. And so he does the initial locks and the initial blend. And then I'll finish things off for like shop update styles outside of mega bats uh, on the littler Carter to get those 50 gram bats you guys would be used to in our, the 250 grams that make up our hundred gram. It's confusing, but that's our system. Okay. So he's trying to get the Merino locks in with the Angora. And like, it's just going every which way. So then suddenly he decides to sandwich it between two layers of Merino locks. He's got this Angora slipping in. Then he starts Moira Rose voice. Just fold it, David, fold it in. I don't know if you guys know that clip when she talked about folding it in. And then that was it for us. The whole night was just references to just fold it in to get this bunny to get on the carter and to stay with the wool. And then once it was folded in, it was totally fine. It went in like an absolute champion, blended in super, super well. Um, because it's so, so fine, like probably like 12 to 15 microns fine, maybe finer. It didn't really seem to make a difference that this had a bunch of different staple lengths versus the commercial stuff. This just seemed to like envelop. It became a part of the Merino, almost like, um, Merino enhancement, like it enhanced the fleece. Different than say when I add silk to a fleece, I feel like that really alters the fleece. This one kind of just gives it, it gave it, uh, it heightened it. It obviously adds that halo because we've got 20% of these bunnies in here. I'm not noticing that it's like incredibly slippy. Angora has a reputation for being super, super slippy. Same with alpaca and stuff when you go to spin it straight up, like it's because it's lacking those crusty heels. It doesn't want to hang on. They don't want it, They don't hang on to each other like wool does. But this one is, we're doing good. If I can long draw fine merino and uh, with 20% alpaca, then we're doing pretty good. So anyway, there's all my stories on how we processed it and what it was like to work with and who these little bunnies are and how their gray just like totally complemented the stites off the natural like silver. Oh gosh, I think that fleece is just so pretty. And so here we have the rabbit took care of Anig, day four, delightful advent. <gasps> what a gorgeous spin. I'm going to, I am going to do a playback and try and show you now that I know the hide my face trick. Just get your dirty mug out of there, Melly, and we can see everything. But this is, this is beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to say smoother. The Merino for me, when I was spinning it, I was just going a little bit slower and working out, making sure I was working out any kind of areas where it wanted to maybe lump or collect or gather. It wasn't much, but I found that in a few spots. Whereas this is like, let's get a little bit more twist. Let's see. This is a much smoother length we're getting here. I love that. 
drafting really easy. I think we're gonna find that with probably a lot of these uh, exotics, right? These enhancers that we're using, that it's going to give everything more of a smoothness, but I'm definitely not finding that it's um, challenging, any more challenging. Weirdly enough, and maybe you'll, you adventures get into the comments if you're watching this, uh, it's easier to spin than the plain day. That's sort of not what I expected. I do sample all these things, by the way. These things all got sampled in the advent before we put them in, but obviously that was a while back, so this is a brain refresher even for me. All right, one more just because I'm feeling so stinking soothed. And then, ooh, of course the last one is the one where I'm going to space it out. How far can she go? Ooh, it's like a little yoga stretch. Okay, I'm gonna apply back, and I'm gonna get my face dramatically out of the way. Let's see if I can do this. Hmm. Okay, it's a hand in front of my face. The hand blocks the face. And then I let it focus. Can we see it or no? Uh, dang it, I feel like it's still... This is ridiculous. Every single time. <laughs> to recognize my face now at first hold on um, no it's not working okay i'm actually looking in to see if i can get the focus i am trying my hardest here why does this look so natural and easy for everybody else is it or are you all like is there some system is there some reddit thread i don't know about that will give me like Three tips to not looking like a goober on YouTube. Okay, well, that's it for me today. There was no treasure that goes with the foil days. Uh, I will be back in two days for day five. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I'm like, we're like, we are barely putting our toes in the water. Oh, I can't wait for you guys to see what's coming up. There's some excellent, excellent stuff coming up. But otherwise, that's it for me today. Um... Much love to you all. See you back in two days. Kisses. Okay, bye.